हेलो गाइस वेलकम टू द फर्स्ट लेक्चर ऑन सेल कल्चर इन केमोस्टेट सो फर्स्ट वी विल नो व्हाट इज बैक्टीरियल सेल ग्रोथ एंड हाउ इट इज डन सो इन बैक्टीरियल सेल ग्रोथ यू ऑलरेडी नो दैट यू रिक्वायर अ मीडिया एंड इन दिस मीडिया यू ऐड अ यू ऐड बैक्टीरियल सेल्स ऑलराइट सो इफ यू यूज अ मीडिया बैक्टीरियल सेल्स विल ग्रो by utilizing this media and certain bacteria cells produce some essential compounds by utilizing this media like antibiotics are produced by some bacteria so what do they do part of the nutrients of this media is utilized for bacterial cell growth and the part of it is converted into production of useful compounds like antibiotics all right so substrate plus cells substrate here is the media that you give for the growth of bacterial cells so substrate plus cells give you extracellular product plus more cells okay so this is the fundamental thing that is happening when you whenever you are working on bacterial cells in a medium so there are several different phases of bacterial cell growth we will discuss that in detail when we will do in microbiology but here i am going to give you a brief introduction on that so there are mainly four different phases of bacterial cell growth the first is called the lag phase the second is called the exponential or the logarithmic phase the third is called the stationary phase and the fourth is called as the decline or the death phase so there are mainly these four different phases that you will observe in bacterial cell growth when you will plot the number of bacterial cells on the y axis versus the time on the x axis all right now be, apart from these four phases there are may, there are also two different phases like the transition between log to exponential phase is called as the acceleration phase and designated by a and the transition between exponential phase to stationary phase is denoted as deceleration phase or the d phase so all total we have six different prominent phases in a bacterial cell growth curve now what happens in a lag phase in lag phase basically the bacterial cells do not divide but they adjust to the new environment and they prepare themselves for division okay so they just adjust to the new cell environment that is a new media that you have given for bacterial cell growth they adjust to that and they prepare itself for division in the next phase now in the exponential phase what happens they divide exponentially that is from one bacterial cell you get two bacterial cell from two you get four from four you get 16 likewise they divide exponential and the number of bacterial cells increases during this phase the exponential phase the there is no scarcity of the nutrient media you have ample of the nutrient media and the bacterial cells can utilize that for their own will and they can grow at an exponential rate so there is no binding on the media there is no scarcity of the media there is plenty of nutrient media for the bacterial cells to perform exponential growth but what happens as more and more bacterial cell grows more and more bacterial cells will be continuing to utilize the nutrient media so after some time scarcity of nutrient media will continue to happen okay you will notice that the nutrient media is falling short as more number of bacterial cells are growing so on transition from exponential to stationary phase in stationary phase what happens the number of bacterial cells that are growing is equal to the number of bacterial cells that are dividing because now you don't have that much of media to support all the bacterial cells all the new bacterial cells there are now gradually there is scarcity of media is occurring okay so there is scarcity of media is occurring because there are now plenty of new bacterial cells and they do not have ample of nutrient media now to, to perform exponential growth so what happens is stationary phase the number of bacterial cells that are uh, being born is equal to the number of bacterial cells that are having their death okay so after stationary phase you have the death of the decline phase during this phase what happens the bacterial cells uh, become dead because as the more and more bacterial cells will grow they will continue to produce some toxic inhibitory compounds and 
there will be depletion of nutrient media so because of all of this gradually the after a certain period of time the bacteria cells will be dead so after stationary phase you have the death of the decline phase so there are mainly four different phases and the transition from lag to exponential phase is called as acceleration phase and the transition from exponential phase to stationary phase is called as the deceleration phase now as you have all as i have already told you in the exponential phase there is plenty of nutrient media so there is uh, no uh, scarcity on the nutrient media you have ample of the nutrient media for the bacterial cells and the bacterial cells can grow at their own will and divide at an exponential rate that is the cell growth is independent of the nutrient media because of that exponential growth rate is of first order okay now if we have if it is first order so like the first order rate equation we can write dx dt is equal to mu net into x where x is the cell growth concentration and mu net is the net specific growth rate okay mu net is the net specific growth rate mu net is actually obtained it is actually obtained by subtracting kd from mu g okay mu net is actually mu g minus kd mu g is actually the growth rate and kd is the death rate so mu g minus kd gives you the net specific growth rate which is mu net so since exponential growth rate is of first order so dx dt is equal to mu net into x where x is the cell concentration and mu net is the specific growth rate so at t is equal to 0 you have the cell concentration is x0 at t is equal to 0 the cell concentration is x0 and at t equal to t you have cell concentration is x now if you integrate it what happened this will come so you can rearrange this dx by x is equal to you have mu net into dt okay i am just rearranging this equation so mu net into dt now we will integrate this equation so we will integrate this on both side this will be from 0 to t and this will be from x0 to or x0 to x okay so if we integrate it here we will get ln x is equal to mu net into t so on integration we have ln x by x0 is equal to mu net into t or x is equal to x0 into e to the power of mu net into t so this is our final uh, the equation on the exponential growth rate okay so this is the final equation x is equal to x0 into e to the power of mu net into t this is what happening in case of exponential growth rate because it is first order rate equation now we can calculate the doubling time td for doubling time td we have uh, we will take x is equal to 2x0 we will take x is equal to 2x0 and then we put the value this value in this equation so if you put this value in this equation so we can calculate doubling time as ln2 by mu net which is 0.693 by mu net so this is the doubling time all right this is the doubling time dt now these two formulae are very important because questions have been asked many a times in gate on calculating the doubling time or calculating the uh, cell mass concentration in the exponential growth rate so please remember these two formulae now like the exponential growth rate it is of first order likewise the death rate also is of first order so in death rate the equation is written as dx dt is equal to minus of kd into x minus because in the death rate the cell growth is decreasing and kd here represents the death constant so dx dt is equal to kd into x so in just as in the previous case if we integrate here as well we will get 
x is equal to x naught into e to the power of minus kd into t. x is equal to x naught into e to the power of minus kd into t. So this is the death rate equation which is of first order. Now let us see yield coefficients. So yield coefficients are written as y x s. It is this is written as y x by s, but it is read as y x s. So y x s is actually minus of delta x by delta s. So this is the yield coefficient. Yield coefficient means the yield of cell mass concentration with respect to a particular substrate. All right. So y x s is actually minus of delta x by delta s now delta here means the change so here i can write minus of if x is the final concentration uh, final cell concentration and x not is the initial cell concentration so i can write as x minus x not in place of delta x and in place of delta s i can write as s minus s not okay s minus s not so this can also be written as x not minus s x dot minus x by s minus s not okay so i can write it in this way also so in this form this equation becomes very important so here y x s this is read as though it is written as y x by s but it is read as y x s that means the yield of uh, cell x means here cell so yield of cell mass concentration with respect to substrate suppose likewise we can also find out y x o2 y x o2 so y x o2 will be delta x by minus of delta x by delta o2 all right so likewise we can find out y p s which is the yield of product concentration with respect to the substrate so y p s is minus of delta p by delta s so these two formulae these three formulae are very important now we have maintenance coefficient maintenance coefficient is actually the specific rate of substrate uptake for cellular maintenance so it is actually the rate at which substrate is being uptaken okay for the cellular maintenance this is called as maintenance coefficient it is given as m is equal to minus of ds dt whole divided by x so ds dt means the change in substrate concentration with respect to time and x means the cell mass concentration this is the maintenance coefficient now we will see growth associated products non growth associated product and mixed growth associated product so what does growth associated product mean growth associated product means here the as the bacterial cell is growing it is also producing some product that means the product production is happening simultaneously with the growth of the bacterial cells like production of some constitutive enzymes happen with the bacterial cell growth okay so here uh, production rate qp is proportional to the growth rate mu g of the bacterial cells uh, so it is written as qp is equal to qp is the product production rate is written as qp is equal to y px y px is a constant y px into mu g so it is actually because this is a constant so qp is actually proportional to mu g and it is also written as 1 by x qp is actually 1 by x dp dt so this is an important equation and this equation is only valid for growth associated products now there are some non growth associated products like production of antibiotics so what happens here this more mostly this take place in the stationary phase okay non growth associated product formation mostly take place in the stationary phase and growth associated product formation mostly take place in the exponential or the logarithmic phase 
Okay, so non-growth associated product formation. So what does happen in non-growth associated product formation? In non-growth associated product formation, there is no direct relationship with product production and the growth rate of the bacteria cells. So the bacteria cells are growing at a certain rate and the product formation is, is happening at a certain rate. So there is no direct relationship or co-relationship between the two different things. Here, QP, product production rate, is equal to beta which is a constant so product production rate is constant because it is not dependent on the growth rate on the of the bacterial cells likewise you have mixed growth associated product in mixed growth associated product so some of the part of product production is dependent on the growth rate of the bacterial cells while some part is not that is why the name is mixed growth associated product like some lactic acid fermentation LAF, xanthan gum production. So these all take place during mixed growth associated product formation. So the equation for mixed growth associated product formation is given as QP is equal to alpha mu G plus beta where alpha and beta are two constants. Okay. Alpha and beta are two constants. QP is the product production rate and mu G is the growth rate of the bacterial cells. Now one thing you note here, if alpha becomes zero, if alpha becomes 0, what happens? QP is equal to beta, which is the equation for non-growth associated product. So, from mixed growth associated product, we can get non-growth associated product equation if alpha becomes 0 here. This equation, QP is equal to alpha mu G plus beta, is called as Lutkin pirate equation. Alright, so this equation is named as Lutkin pirate equation. On the right hand side, you can see the different graphs of the different growth associated or the non-growth associated products that you will get. If we plot X, that means the cell mass concentration or the P, that means the product concentration on the Y axis with respect to time. So the first graph is of growth associated products. As you can see, in growth associated product, what happens? The cell growth is increasing at a particular rate and with that cell growth, the product is also increasing the production rate is also increasing uh, simultaneously with the cell growth so because the product production rate is dependent on the cell growth because as more and more of cells will be produced more and more of products will also be produced so here uh, this phase is called as growth associated product formation the second diagram shows you mixed growth associated product here you can see this difference has has been widened than the previous case here what happens some part of the product formation is dependent on the growth rate while some part is not dependent on the growth rate and on third diagram shows you the non-growth associated product formation that means what the cell growth concentration is happening at a certain rate while product formation is completely independent of the cell growth there is no direct relationship between that product formation is ha ha happening at its own rate it is not at all bothered about uh, the rate at which the cell growth is uh, happening. Alright, like production of antibiotics. Now, why uh, this uh, non-growth associated product formation, this is not dependent on the cell growth? Uh, because, suppose, when you are, uh, some bacterial uh, strains are secreting antibiotics, uh, it is not dependent whether the bacterial cells are in log phase or lag phase or stationary phase or uh, death phase because as long as the bacterial cells are alive, they will secrete the antibiotics. So, the antibiotic production or the non-growth associated product formation is not dependent on which phase the bacterial cells are living in. Whether they live in the log phase, whether they live in lag phase, whether they live in stationary phase, they will continue to produce the antibiotics as long as they are dividing. Okay. So, mostly the, the non-growth associated product formation like production of antibiotics happen in the stationary phase because at that point of time the there is no dependency on the nutrient concentration of the bacterial cells. You have if you remember in the bacterial growth curve you have this thing. So the, this becomes linear part. Okay. With time, you do not have any increase in the cell growth. 